Hi guys, my name is Abdul and in this video we will go through the uh, SSL uh, TLS which is Secure Socket Layer and Transport Layer Security. So let's get started. Um, the content of these slides uh, would be going through uh, SSL TLS, what it is, versions, what is it used for, what application is used for, and we'll go in details um, on the SSL TLS uh, handshake, how it happens. So what is the SSL TLS? So SSL TLS, they are uh, popular cryptographic, cryptographic protocols. They're used to provide communication uh, security. Uh, so um, they provide encryption uh, just to make sure that the um, data is protected. They provide authentication, make sure that the parties involved in this SSL TLS communication is, are who they claim they are. And also integrity. Uh, to verify data has not been tampered. So uh, they provide uh, communication security. Now, what is the TLS? What is SSL? Why there are two names for that? Uh, so the functionality of them, they're both the same, but the naming have been changed over the time. So it started with secure socket layer, um, the SSL, which was developed by Netscape. And the first version of SSL was developed in, in 1995, and it wasn't released until it was 1996. So the first few version of SSL was 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. And then there have been a rebranding of the TLS, of, of the SSL, sorry. Uh, the rebranding was the TLS. So IETF came up with the TLS is the same like it was the same as SSL but it have been changed you know because it had security flaws some of the version was not even released they came up with a new one or renaming of the original one which is the TLS transport layer security and that was released in 1999 um, so we can see in the graph here the uh, SSL 1.0 it never went to public and then 1995 there was 2.0 it had a lot of security flaws and then 3.0 um, and then the rebranding happened or renaming in 1999 uh, to TLS 1.0. TLS 1.0 was similar to 3.0, SSL 3.0. And then the SSL TLS 1.1, sorry, came up. Uh, it had also vulnerabilities. It had like uh, flaws. Now the most two common uh, used TLS versions are TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3. TLS 1.1 is not uh, being used anymore, or it's not recommended to be used anymore. Um, the difference between TLS 1.2 and 1.3, it added more uh, cipher suites, uh, improved security, drop of unsecure uh, feature. But we'll go more into, uh, there will be a graph at the end of the slide that would show us uh, exactly the difference between TLS 1.3 and 1.2. But it's not going to be... Um, much detail. Now, what is the SSL um, TLS used for and in what OSI layer it would be at? Uh, this question I personally had in a couple of interviews that um, what OSI layer that the SSL TLS work at and also what is it used for and also explain about the uh, SSL TLS handshake. So um, it's pretty important to know uh, this information. Now, the SSL TLS, it's widely used in client-server application. Uh, so, most of the common uses is HTTPS. So, every time that you open your browser and you browse to a different website, there have to be something to make sure that the connection is secure. And uh, the TLS SSL is used for that. So, when you open the browser, sorry, and you see this green box showing up. So that would verify for you that the browser would verify for you using the TLSSL handshake that this is secure. Some websites you might browse and you might see an error on the browser saying this connection is not secure. And we'll come into in the TLS handshake into why would this happen? And what are the reasons that you would see a website uh, not secure? Um, so uh, SSL TLS most common used in HTTPS. Um, 
but also it's used in other application like FTP, uh, sorry, FTP, um, should have not put HTTPS here because I already mentioned it here anyway, and POP3 and also uh, in other applications. Uh, PKI as well uses LTLS. Now, uh, the question of where does it run? So it runs, if you're referring into the TCP IP layers, it runs at the application layer for sure. And if you're referring to the OSI layer, then it runs at the uh, session layer. Now, before we go into the handshake and explain the detail of handshake, I'm just going to give a quick overview of uh, what this section. So, obtain a server uh, certificate. So, uh, basically, you would use uh, software. For example, you would use a software called uh, Open. Oops, Open SSL. And in that software, when you uh, generate a certificate, create, uh, like give all the details of the certificate, the organization, uh, the the length of the key. We'll go through this in, in a separate video, but you would be having uh, a private key and you would be having uh, something called CSR. Now, from the CSR, you would need to have the public key. So now, how do you get the public key? Uh, in order to get the public key, this CSR have to be signed by something called CA. CA is Certificate Authority. Certificate Authority is a global um, organization, I would say, and uh, these global organizations, in order to make sure uh, every certificate is trusted, they have to fall, like, uh, they have to be signed by authority. Uh, just to verify that this certificate have been signed by this um, public authority or this certificate sort of, uh, authority and it's um, trusted certificate. It's public certificate. It's it's not just like private certificate. So, uh, excuse me, we'll go through this in more detail. But basically when you create, so you would have a private key, you would have a CSR. CSR would have to be signed by this uh, public well-known CA. So all these browsers... Uh, that you log into that hosted in public, they have they have been signed by certificate authority. Anyway, uh, this certificate authority will give something, which is the public key. Now, uh, you have public key and you have uh, a private key. This public and private key would be used in the server. So the server will have. A combination of uh, private key and have a combination of uh, and a public key. The private key would only be um, used in the server. It's never shared anywhere, right? As we mentioned in the encryption video, if you have a private key, this private key would remain secret. Uh, the public key can be shared with um, other peers or other endpoints, as we mentioned in the encryption video. And we'll see um, in the TLS handshake how that helps in the TLS SSL handshake. Uh, all right. So uh, I will explain the uh, SSL TLS handshake in the next uh, slides because I want to draw on the right side. So I left the picture here just so you would see um, the graph uh, while the explanation is happening. So the first message the client would send. So this is the client and this is the server. The first message that the client would send is the client hello message, right? So what would this client hello message? And also mentioning this TLS handshake would happen after the TCP handshake. Uh, after TCP handshake, there would be the TLS SSL handshake. Uh, now, the client would send a hello message, as you can see here. This hello message would contain two things, uh, actually more. But the main two things is it will contain the version, uh, the SSL TLS version, and it will also uh, include the cipher suite that the uh, client supports. Uh, so these cipher suite include uh, hashing, you know, and encryption and other things. 
while hashing an encryption algorithm. Now, when the server would receive this, the server based on its um, based on its cipher suite um, setup, or based on the cipher suite configuration that it have, it will uh, select or choose the proper one, and it will uh, send back to the uh, client the server hello. Now, what does the server hello? So let's say this is client hello. What does the server hello contain? So the server hello would contain um, public key. As we mentioned earlier, you need a you need to uh, generate a server certificate, and we said that there's a public key involved in that, and that public key can be shared with any endpoint. So you would have a public key, and um, this public key would be sent back to the client, and also the uh, TLS SSL version um, that the server supports, right? So now the client sent hello, server sent hello back. We know what's in both these messages. They would agree on the cipher, right? And they would know each other version. Now, and the third step that happens, it doesn't mention here in detail, it just shows key exchange, because it's actually there will be a key exchange that happening after the client would verify that the server is legit and verify the con con uh, connection to the server is secure. Now, how does this verification happen? So, the third step that would be after the server would send to the uh, client. Now the client will have to verify that the connection is secure. The job, I want to know this connection is secure. And this connection secure is like the literally the green box in the browser. So there are five uh, steps that the client would uh, go through to verify that uh, this server is Secure. First thing is verify the validity of the certificate. So the server, when it sends back its public certificate or public key, or public certificate, or we call it public key, um, it will verify validity. It will want to make sure that this um, server certificate is valid, right? Uh, the second thing, um, it will check oops it will check trusted root authority so it would want to make sure that the ca so remember we mentioned that the server the public key of the server it gets signed by a ca right and that public key would be sent to the client. So the client would make sure that the trusted root, uh, it would make sure that this uh, CA is trusted. So it would check its trusted root authority. And uh, I can show you another video where we kind of will mention more detail about the certificate. The browser or each client would have a trusted root authority database uh, coming uh, with itself so the bro so um, it's built in, in the computer it's like in the operating system um, so the trusted root authority would contain list of CA list of all CA right so it verified that this uh, public key certificate that I received is actually valid trusted by uh, it's by a trusted CA as I checked in my folder and then it will need to check certificate revocation list what is this this is um, something that the browser would refer to it can be either browser or any the firewall for example it will verify it's it's either something local in a database or uh, it's online so certificate of vacation list, the browser would check if 
uh, this certificate have been revocated, so it's not trusted anymore. So let's say um, someone had a web server and that web server is not being used anymore, right? So you have to revoke this uh, server certificate. So the server would, um, so the people, like the owner of the server would like, would inform the CA that my certificate is not trusted anymore. So the CA people would put this uh, certificate under the certificate revocation list, uh, and so it won't be trusted anymore. So this is constantly, it's always updated with new revocate certificates. Uh, the fourth step is the digital signature. Um, I think it's better, uh, I'll mention the digital signature in another video. So the digital signature, um, it's something that the client would um, use to verify that, um, or to verify this um, server certificate uh, is trusted or not. Fifth step is server, um, what's it called, sorry. Um, uh, subject alternative name. Um, so subject alternative name, uh, it will check if this certificate have any other uh, subject alternative name are, you can say the, uh, um, the domain name of the server, just to check if there are other names involved in that certificate. Now, after all these steps that happened, if the uh, certificate, like if, if all these passed, that means that this server certificate is trusted, right? So after that, what would happen? The client would come up with, so the client now received its public, uh, the public key from the server, and now it would come up with a key or a random key and would encrypt this random key with what? Can you guess? So it would encrypt that random key with the uh, public certificate of the server. Server public certificate. And then it will send it to the server. Now, can the server figure out the decryption of that? Yes, it will. Why? Because the server have the, uh, so it will receive this encryption message. Server have the private key. And using the private key, you would be able to decrypt it and get the random key. So remember in the previous video encryption and decryption, anything encrypted by a public key can be decrypted by a private key. Anything encrypted by a private key can be um, decrypted by a public key. So now random key is um, also the server is aware of it. Now they would both come up with a key which is the um, master key. And then they will come up with something called session key. So this uh, coming up with the master key session key is all involved in calculation. Now both of them would have the same key. So this literally are the same key, right? Now, if you remember from the older video, they would use this key for encryption and decryption, same key. And this encryption algorithm is called symmetric encryption. So where we noticed here is um, symmetric encryption 
using asymmetric. So the key, the, the asymmetric encryption um, played a role in uh, ex like uh, making sure the connection is secure and everything and making sure that both sides will come up with one key. Because as you remember in, in, um, in symmetric encryption, you won't be able to, uh, it's, it's really um, not a good idea to share because we're using the same key. It's not a good idea to share the same key over the public, right? So uh, we, use, we use the asymmetric encryption um, to make sure the connection is secure and also at the same time coming up with, uh, both sides would be able to come up with one key that would be used. And why using, um, why not keeping using the asymmetric encryption? Well, symmetric encryption, as we mentioned earlier, it's simple, it's fast, so um, that's one of the reasons. So now both of the sides came up with the same key. This key would be used for uh, encryption and would be used for decryption uh, on both uh, sides. So I hope you guys I um, understood the uh, TLSSSL handshake um, better. Um, there will be another video just to show you how the digital signature work. Um, and also, we we'll show you like where you see the certificate in the browser and everything. Um, and just one last thing left. Uh, I want to go, I'll show you the graph of uh, SSL 1.2 versus SSL 1.3. So here there are seven, sorry, here there are seven messages involved. Here there are five messages involved. Um, it's faster. The SSL 1.2 is faster than, uh, t uh, sorry, a TLS 1.2 is faster than TLS 1.3. Um, so there are also other uh, detailed involved um, that I can mention in other videos but as far as I remember one of the detail is using um, there would be sequence number I believe used for reliable connection um, actually no that's not it that's for IK version 2 I mixed up with something else <laughs> but um, anyway the general thing is uh, less messages is used um, and TLS 1.3 than TLS 1.2, and also it is uh, faster, less time consuming. So because you can see here, it's almost like, so this one takes 300 milliseconds, this one is like between 200 and 250 milliseconds. So I hope that video was helpful for you guys, and stay tuned for my uh, next videos. Um, have a good one, guys. Bye.